Hello, my name is Susanna, and today with my colleague jo Joel, and on behalf of Tani and João as well, we will tell you about the contemporary occupation of caves in the outskirts of Lisbon. While searching for photographs for other projects that we are working on, suddenly we found some photos of the 1940s cavemen. That's what, what they were called in the captions. Since none of us had any idea of that situation in Lisbon, and to be honest, there had never been any concern by academia with this, contemporary, with this contemporary occupation of caves, we decided we had to do something. We had to find out who are these people and what led them to that situation. After all, archaeology is supposed to be public, right? But you know, we were happy in those days. Because, 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 the sketch that we have just seen is unfortunately precisely the way certain speeches were made and are still made today. That's what we would like to deconstruct. This humanist approach to the world of white European middle class males. The, that way of seeing, in this specific case, the poor must come to an end. As we will see, we can establish parallels between what happened in the beginning of 20th century and the way those people were seen and, the, and what is happening in the beginning of 21st century and the way these people are seen nowadays. Everything changed in the meanwhile, but sometimes it seems like nothing has changed. But let's go back in time a little bit. January 10, 1935. Lisbon was the capital of the great Portuguese empire. However, people were still living in caves. This is their story. This news that we see here is the story of a child baptism in those caves at the outskirts of Lisbon. Let me translate you the sentence here. Besides everything, I found that out later, they are actually happy in the midst of their poverty fulfilling almost perfectly the old tale of the happy man that didn't even have a shirt. This, is perfect, this perfectly demonstrated the, the paternalistic way in which these people were seen, like we have seen in the previous sketch. But who are these people? At the end of 19th century, there was a need for a working force in Lisbon factories, leading massive groups of people to migrate to the capital coming from different regions of Portugal. These working class didn't have the means to live in the noble areas of the city, so they found homes on the outskirts of Lisbon, near Alcântara and Monsanto. Some of those places consisted of collective households, particularly caves, where several families would share the same accommodations. The area of Monsanto is characterized as a limestone outcrop area which means there is a natural propensity for the existence of caves. These ones served as quarries during the 19th century. Once their exploration ended, they started to be occupied by people for different purposes. Well, this is what traditional archaeology does. That's not wrong, but it's also not enough. These places, in particular the ones in Monsanto, were like a communal place where several families lived together and shared the same spaces. As you can imagine, living here was not their first choice. Sometime in the 20th century, Manuel, a young boy, his father José and his two siblings, Anna and Joaquin, we will call them that, were producing paper mache dolls in their house in Lisbon. It was their only way of subsistence. However, their neighbors didn't like the smoke and dirtiness associated with this activity. So, they were expelled from their rightful home. No one else would take them. Their only option was to move into these caves, so they could continue to carry on their professional activity. Otherwise, they would starve to death. This is just one of the hundreds of life stories of the people who once called these caves a home. We don't know exactly until when those caves were inhabited. But it seems that only after the Portuguese Revolution on 25th of April of 1974 that the situation gradually started to change. We know that some of those in Alcântara were called home at least until 1995. However, from the 1950s onwards, the references to these caves in the press almost disappear, perhaps due to the censorship 
associated with the dictatorial regime that gained strength in that decade. The only exception was the product's offerings to the children who inhabited the Monsanto caves, like the one we can see in the image. That was surely connected with the regime's propaganda. If they really cared about these children, they would find accommodation for them instead of giving them stuff once or twice a year to feel good with their consciences. But during the dictatorship, the idea that of poverty was somehow romanticized. So for the society, it wasn't really a problem that hundreds of people lived in those conditions. Besides, in a religious and conservative country as Portugal, there was a belief that the more people suffered in life, the better would be their afterlife. But Monsanto and Alcantara were not the only places where people inhabited caves near Lisbon. In fact, in Oeiras also existed caves that were inhabited by two men at least until late 2000s, as a television report shows us. Now, try to imagine living in one of those places, aka living without sanitation, without privacy, without security, without clean water, without electricity, without a kitchen, without basic health care, not even a proper floor, but living with a lot of humidity, all kinds of bugs and other non-desired animals playing in your food, raining everywhere while you're sleeping, surrounded by strangers, and no, you cannot be happy in these conditions. Luckily, this no longer exists, right, Joel? No, Susanna. What do you mean? There are still people living in caves? Uh, yeah, more or less. Uh, so, um, so, so here, uh, earlier in this year, we visited the, the caves. Okay, so we, and it's true, like Susanna is saying, they are already closed. Uh, Lisbon and uh, Oeiras, and it, it is unacceptable so to people, so many municip municipalities close them because it, it's unacceptable to live uh, on caves, uh, as you can uh, imagine. Normally I don't read, but I will read it, sorry. Uh, so to have an idea, when we got there, even if it was not idea to go in a phenomenological way, we went there and tried to imagine how it was to live on those caves. So as you can see, the, the gates are open, so we just set in. Okay, so we went there, we, we, we entered there, and it was, some of us felt uh, felt really afraid. So, and if the, the, the this fall down or this collapse, what, what might happen, how it was to be, it was really cold inside, it was humidity. So, yeah, it was, it, it felt, uh, felt really strange. So, how would it, be, would it be to live here? How would it be to raise kids here? Okay, so, so during, during several years, so it's, uh, 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 and we couldn't stop thinking about would this cave still inhabited if they they weren't closed, H how it was or not. And, and however, Susan is right. So no, uh, the the old caves are not inhabited um, anymore. Uh, but we have a different kind of cave people in Portugal. I believe it's uh, not only in Portugal. Uh, they no longer sleep on caves, uh, but there are a lot of similarities that we can see that it can be found in most situations with hundred years uh, that separate this. Okay, so. This is uh, July uh, 15th, 2021, and Lisbon is no longer the capital of an empire, but it's the capital of Portugal, and it's a member of European Union, whatever that means. Okay, however, people are once again uh, starting to live in checks. Okay, so th and this is their story, not a hundred thousand, uh, uh, 100 years ago story. So this house, uh, this, this, this news, uh, this is, this, uh, this, Checks here. They started after uh, uh, Lisbon metropolitan area shortage of houses. Okay, during uh, uh, and they, they they got worse during the the pandemic. Um, sorry, I don't really. Okay, so and uh, so the, the families they they lost their jobs. Okay, so the jobs they disappeared. Uh, they they could no longer afford a house. Okay, and the shack is the only situation they can they can do. So the municipality went to them and they were really frightened. No, you cannot build anything here. No, you can just not build here. So. And it's easy to say that and even to understand that for a municipality, but uh, for a frightened man, there is no, no other option. Okay, so the other option is to go to, to, to the street and to live to, with their kids on the floor. So, okay, so, but who, who are these, these people that live here? Okay, so uh, at the end of the 2020, uh, 2010, there was a need of a working force due to the real estate speculation in Lisbon and leading to massive groups of people uh, to, to migrate to the capital and coming from, from different countries. Uh, this working class doesn't have the means to live in the noble areas of, uh, of Lisbon city. It's a very touristic place right now. I believe you, most of you already uh, visited. So they found houses on the outskirts of Lisbon. And sometimes in the, in the 21st century here, we are seeing Maria. It's a 43 year old woman 
Okay, uh, we invented the name, and she, she just lost her job. She was a geriatric uh, uh, assistant, and at the same time, her husband, João, uh, lost her job as well in the construction uh, due to the time COVID pandemic and downsizing labor uh, needs. And the house they live cost 295 euros, 295 euros, and they don't afford to pay the, 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 the house, and so they have to move to the street and not to be on the street. So they build the shacks that the municipality doesn't want to, be, to, to, to build the shacks anymore. Two kids, okay? And these are just the, one of the hundreds of stories, unfortunately, that people uh, that call these shacks a home have to, 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 to deal with. So what, what kind of alternatives do these people have to live with kids? Two kids, three kids, four kids? Okay, these are their alternatives. Okay, so this ah, oh, this is a poon. This, this is a poon neighborhood in the outskirts of Lisbon. Bonk. This is in the center of Lisbon. What you see there, you cannot see because maybe you don't know it. It's two hundred meters away, of, from a new harbor where more than ten thousands of tourists arrive every month. Two hundred meters from that, they do not see them. They are invisible to everybody, but they're there. Two hundred meters. So people go there and pass there every day, and so they they are invisible. Uh, as the cave people were, okay, so a long, a long time ago. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, uh, in the last years, we observed the growing of different, of different poverty scapes, uh, the home of the homeless, okay, several places like this. Uh, and, and, and we're asking ourselves, are the new cavemen poorer than the, the original cavemen? Okay, we, we don't know how to, to answer the, the, this question, but it's it's not really a nice place. So, and, and just to finish, to use the same words that you used before with the cavemen, so uh, not try to imagine living in these conditions here, okay, with this with this kid, so uh, AKA living without sanitation, privacy, security, clean water, electricity, a kitchen, a basic healthcare, proper floor, and nowadays even internet, okay, but living with a lot of humidity, all kinds of bugs that are jumping inside your food, raining everywhere while you're sleeping, and among strange people that you are afraid of. And no, you cannot uh, be happy in these conditions. Luckily, like our politician says, this no longer exists, right, Susanna? Okay, thank you very much.